I think about the first time I was ever led by anyone in my life because I think a lot of how we learn to lead is by the people we hang out with and the people we observe and the people we admire. And Johnny and I were finishing up our Saturday, running about the neighborhood, capes attached, no kidding, flying about the neighborhood, solving all the world's problems. I just wanted to thank Ron for a great way to start the day. There we stood on the edge of the roof looking at the tower, just out of reach, wondering, oh, Oh, we're going to get down. It turned into quite a problem. A bit of an intellectual discussion we had. After some discussion, my friend and leader, Johnny, looked at me and he said, Ronnie, trust your cape. He leapt off the roof, landed in the grass, rolled to a stop, got up triumphant. What could I do but follow? You kind of fall back, you, you, you get apprehensive, and, but the time comes when, okay, I got to be Superman, I guess, and bring out the cape. I think a leader engages others. I think we engage their attention first, their interest second, their emotional energy third, or somewhere up at the top, and their emotion fourth. Ron's presentation was amazing. Uh, his Trust the Cape speech, uh, that was, that's going to be a great testament to project management, something that I'm really going to, to stick with. He really engaged the audience. We got to go around and speak and pass off answers to each other. It was very engaging and very informative. What do you love about working with people on project teams? Um, the creative ideas that you get by working with other people. I love that too. Thank you so much for being a good sport. You've got something you like about projects, I'll bet. May I? Let me bring this over to you, miss. There you go. The opportunity to learning new things. Thank you for that. The message that resonated with me was getting people convinced to think with their hearts, not with their hands. At the count of three, I want you to point at somebody at your table. Oh, chosen one, okay? At the count of three, one finger, two fingers, raise that, one, two, three, point. All right. Hands up, oh chosen one. Remain standing, everybody else sit down. You're on. Perseverance, I want to hear from you. Enthusiasm. Thank you leaders, one and all, nicely done. If we lead people from a perspective, from an attitude base, that's what I hear right here, you're going to get good results. Because then you can choose what actions to take. Then you can choose how to approach a situation. You got the right attitude, the rest of it becomes pretty clear of how I go about it. Ron's speech was absolutely fantastic. Not only entertaining, but informative, well put together, and engaged the audience. Really one of the best speeches I think I've ever, ever seen. Now, if you're setting up a table that you have your boss sitting at, raise your hand. Yes, sir. <laughs> Shout out to the other back corner. Give us a verb. Ask. Ask. Don't you love that word? Ask. Give us a verb. Oh, don't you love that word? Okay, thank you for that. This corner, give us a verb. Thank you for that. Over here, celebrate. celebrate. Give yourselves a round of applause. You know, some of us are crusty and rough around the edges and some are silky smooth and they can both be good leaders if their attitude is one of integrity, of helping others, of performance, of those issues. Would you agree? So it's not about style. It's not about who we are. It's not about accent. It's about attitude fundamental values that we have and hold about members of our team. We chose to bring back Ron Black. Uh, he's a very dynamic speaker and he tailored uh, his message for us this year which is step up your project management skills, future trends in project management. If you can send the message, you count and I care. If you can do that in those moments when you need to lead, I think we're on the right track.
of being better leaders. Binky came to my 40th birthday party and she brought a gift. When she walked in the front door, I said, Binky, geez, thanks for coming. Uh, glad to have you and Bob here. And, uh, but you really didn't need me to bring a, bring a gift. You know, I might act like I'm eight years old, but I'm an adult. You didn't need to bring a gift. She so said, Ron, open the box, open the box. And so I, I took the box from her and I opened it, I unwrapped it, it was beautifully wrapped, and inside of it was an envelope and a pair of tennis shoes. And I said, Binky, what's this all about? And she says, Ron, open the envelope, open the envelope. So I opened the envelope, and inside the envelope was what she called an enrollment form. And she said, Ron, I've enrolled you. I said, in what? And she said, a half marathon. <laughs> like running, didn't like running in the Marine Corps, don't like running now, don't plan on running in the future. Thanks very much. But honestly, Binky, she said, with great clarity, wrong. You're getting a bit fluffy. <laughs> well, seven weeks later, I found myself in Phoenix at the first ever half marathon I'd ever seen. I'm, I'm not a runner. I still am not a runner. Honestly, there I was in the middle of 5,000 people. And there we are shivering at, oh, it must have been all the way down to 60 degrees or something in Phoenix. So we're all shivering, right? <laughs> Looking at each other in this mass of humanity. And a gun goes off. What do I know? I dropped to the ground. <laughs> Binky says, Ron, Ron, come on, we've got a plan. I said, Binky, what's happening? She says, Ron, Ron, come on, we've got a plan. Move with me. So she led me. And so I got up, I saw this herd of humanity moving, and I followed the pack. And I ran as hard as I possibly could to keep up with these people. So there I was, running. It's not so bad. 10 steps later, oh my, 20, 30 steps later. I'm pretty soon, I'm gasping for air. I'm looking at Binky for some leadership. She says, Ron, we've got the plan. The plan is we will start slow and we'll finish weak. <laughs> It seemed like hours later. My vision is blurred. I can barely breathe. I'm gasping for air. We finally got to the starting line. <laughs> <laughs> How did I only know how long a half marathon was? It seemed like hours later. You know, we're running. Binky looks over at me one step and she says, Ron, great leadership advice. She says, Ron, if you're not having fun, slow down, you idiot. I thought about that. You know, if I slow down, people are going to pass me. Well, that wasn't a problem anymore. <laughs> Reminded me why I was really out there. It wasn't about being a world champion. It wasn't, a, you know, it was about fluffy. <laughs> That's what it was about, right? So Binky encouraged me the entire way, giving me what I needed when I needed it. The encouragement when I needed it, the goading when I needed it, the challenge when I needed it. I am so happy to have had Binky Alonzo in my life. No kidding, I really am. When um, he talked about Binky, that really hit home to me because I am a runner and I've always wanted to do a half marathon. Um, and so the fact that his friend um, put him in that situation, then encouraged him and led him through it the whole way. It was just an inspiring um, story for himself that he stayed engaged and didn't let her down and she didn't let him down. I thought it was a very inspiring and motivated um, and it touched home with me because I am a runner and it's something on my bucket list that I really want to achieve. You see, I actually finished my first half marathon. Thank you very much. And more importantly, I did not finish last. <laughs> you see, as we approached the finish line, my buddy Binky took a little stutter step, slowed down ever so slightly, and made sure that I crossed the line slightly ahead of her. <laughs> that, my friends, is leadership.